Uh, it's a privilege to come to you once again, my viewers, with the Word of God. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you once again. I pray that as I minister your Word, your grace shall be sufficient for me and for my viewers, and your name shall be praised. Amen. Viewers, thank you once again for tuning in. Um, it's always a pleasure to minister the Word of God. Today we're going to look at um, a topic. The homecoming. Lost souls return. The homecoming. Lost souls return. Um, I want us to look at a passage of the Bible um, in Psalm 90. Psalm 90. We are going to read the first four verses. Psalm 90. I read, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Um, my viewers, I want you to pay close attention, pay close attention to this um, delivery of the word. Now, the first thing I want us to take note of from the passage we read is that um, to see God as a dwelling place. And what do I mean by that? Um, I want you to realize that before anything was created, before anything was created, We had only God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, who had lived from eternity, and they will continue for all eternity. So that means, right before creation, everything that God created resided in God. I'm talking about all creation. Everything that God created were his own ideas. So all those things resided in God. The ideas to create those things resided in God. So I'm not surprised that the psalmist is saying here in Psalm 90, verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And it goes on to say, before the mountains, can you imagine that? Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou art from the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. This means the universes, the planets, the galaxies, the firmament, all plant life, all animal life, all angels, all humans resided in God before they were created. God has always been our dwelling place. I thank God that the man of God who wrote this psalm, Moses, acknowledged this. 
said, Lord, thou art been our dwelling place in all generations. My friends, it is a pleasure to know that all things came from God and all things resided in God even before anything was made. You know, no wonder the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 3, Look at verse 3. It says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. I said, it is a pleasure to know that all things were made by God, and all things resided in God before ever they were made. Which tells me that if all had remained in God, that is, if all had remained the way God made them, if all had remained within the, their boundaries, nothing could have disturbed the order of creation. This is important to know. Now, if all had remained in God, if nothing and no one went out of line, there, were, there would have been no commotion in creation. There would have been no disequilibrium in the universe, in, the, in creation. You know? I want you to think about that. You know? So, and then the surprising thing, the sad thing, was that um, the two highest creation, the two highest in the order of creation, that is humans and angels went out of God. What do I mean by that? They left their place of authority. They left their dwelling place. They left their boundaries, that is, I'm talking about angels and humans, the, the two highest in the order of creation, humans and angels. So because of that, because the two, angels and humans, left their place of service, exceeded their authority, Everything in the universe went out of order. The creation was in trouble. As you can see in Romans 8, which tells us, let's look at it. Romans 8, which says, verse 20, Romans 8, 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity. Can you imagine that? Not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Can you imagine? So that means we are actually not seeing the best of creation right now. Because of the fall of man and the fall of angels. You know? The best of creation will not be seen until... God had restored everything, which actually, actually, it's a, he has actually done through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. But this will be made known, will be made visible, you know, will be put in place by and by. But until then, the best of creation cannot be seen, as we've just read. For the creature was made subject, that is, creation was made subject to vanity. Look at that. Not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. And verse 22 also says, please listen carefully, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travelleth in pain together 
until now. Can you imagine that? I'm going to read that verse again. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Why is that? Why should the whole of creation be groaning and traveling? It is simply because humans and angels went out of order. They left their position. They left where God put them. So the whole thing, everything went awire. You know? So, this is what we're saying here. That there will have been no trouble at all in creation. If humans and angels had remained where God placed them. Well, where that was not to be, that was not to be. But we thank God that if God uh, had not promised or planned to do a work of restoration, things will have remained problematic for eternity. But no, God will not do that. He did not do that. So, and um, fortunately, especially for humans, God wanted the return of humans. And this is why verse 3 of verse 90, of Psalm 90 says, Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Look at that. Thank God that God gave an order for the return of humans. God wanted humans back. God wanted to restore his relationship with humans. Yes, what we are reading here in Psalm 90 verse 3. He said, return. Return. O children of men. Return. Ye children of men. Can you imagine that? What love. What grace, what favor that humans found in the eyes of God. They return. Ye children of men. You know, uh, well, this was not the case for angels who remain fallen. But God ordered the return of humans. You know? God chose to bring humans back. You know, humans were given another chance to return to God. You know, so it actually remains, you know, um, in the hands of humans to decide what they want to do. But God has ordered the return of humans to God. We've just read it in Psalm 90 verse 3. It said, Return, O ye children of men. You know? So, but the question is, are humans going to take advantage of this opportunity? You know? To return to God. To be friends with God once again. Just like it used to be. You know? So, um, my friends and viewers, this is important. We must consider this and look at what is really happening. You know? So, it is important for all humans to know this. So that nobody will be left in doubt. So but nobody will be left in doubt of what is going to happen. What has been happening. What happened in the first place. Why the old creation 
is out of order. Why the creation is groaning until now? My, 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 my friends, my viewers, my brothers and sisters, you know? So, but um, we must never forget that um, the opportunity that God gives humans expires when they leave the physical body. This opening remains while humans are in their physical bodies. No wonder Prophet Isaiah says in uh, Isaiah 55, 55 verse 6. Listen carefully. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Can you imagine that? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I'm sure there are millions of spirits now roaming the universe who can no longer take advantage of this opportunity. That means we humans need to seek God to take advantage of the opportunity he has given to us while we are in the physical body. Otherwise, if we leave it too late, if we leave it and say it doesn't concern me, well, once you are out of your body, that is it. You can then no longer seek God. That's why the prophet is saying here, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. My friends, my viewers, have you called upon God? Have you sought Him for the salvation of your soul? Do you know Him? Are you growing in His grace? As humans, now is the time God has given humans. While they are still in the physical body, once they leave the physical body, they have no right to live or not. And once that is the case, that means they've lost the chance to seek God. That's why the prophet is saying this. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. That means he's telling us that the time is coming in the life or in the economy of a human being, in the program of God for a human being, when God can no longer be found. He said, Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon his name. Call ye upon him while he is near. My friends, are you going to call upon God while he may be found? Are you going to seek him while he is near? Also, in... 2 Corinthians chapter 6. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, the Bible says, Now is the acceptable time. That is, it is acceptable now to seek God. It is acceptable now to worship God. It is acceptable now to repent. It is acceptable now to be born again. It is acceptable now to grow in His grace. It is acceptable now to receive forgiveness. It is acceptable now to be cleansed from sin. It is acceptable now to be empowered by God. Now is the acceptable time. Are you going to take advantage of the opportunity you have in God while you are still alive? Now is the acceptable time. This is in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. 
And now is the day of salvation. That is, why you are still breathing, why you are still alive, is the day of salvation. That is, the day you can be saved, the time you can be saved. Once it is gone, once you die, that is it. That is it. Then you become a lost spirit. There are millions of lost spirits roaming the universe. They are lost. Because they rejected God in their lifetime. They have no rest, no place to go. My brothers and sisters, my friends, my hearers, what are you going to do about this? Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. I'm pleading with you to think about this, to consider the opportunities you have in God. You know what? All those who fail to return to God, all humans who refuse or fail to return to God, you know God has created a world for them as well, where they will be forever. Because God is a God of order. Just like every government has a prison, the government of God also has a prison. We are troublemakers. Lost spirits will be kept. Let's look at what Psalm 9 verse 17 says. Psalm 9 verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Look at that. That is a very scary thing. Look at it again. Verse, uh, um, Psalm 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. This is the word of God, which abides, which lives forever. We cannot be broken. It is there. It is the word of God. My friends, my listeners, my hearers, why don't you come to God? Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Why don't you seek God now? While he may be found. While he is near. Because tomorrow may be too late. My friends, think about this. Consider this. Because God wants everyone to return to him. Because we have always been, he has always been our dwelling place. It's our dwelling place. So we have, he wants us to return to him so that we can continue to dwell in him. So that we can dwell in him. Because it is in him. We have everything. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. But millions of people are living outside God. And they think they are enjoying themselves. They think it's not necessary to know God, to come to God, forgetting that God was our dwelling place. And he still wants to be our dwelling place. That's why he wants everyone to return to him. To him. He said, come unto me, said Jesus. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest, my friends. What are you going to do about this? Don't leave it too late. Seek God while he may be found. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. God has done everything necessary. He has given us what we need. He sent his son to us, to the world, to die, to take our punishment. The penalty of the sin that we committed. And Jesus took it upon himself. So that he could open the door. The gateway to heaven. To the kingdom of God. To our dwelling place. That is God. He wants us to return to God. Jesus died. So that we can return to our original dwelling place. That is God. God is our dwelling place. As the psalmist says. You know, as we read earlier, Lord, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And once 
humans moved out of God, everything went wrong. But God wants us to return. Say return. Oh, ye children of men. Verse 3, Psalm 90. Return, ye children of men. This is an opportunity for all humans everywhere to return to God through our Lord Jesus Christ who came to be the mediator between God and humans. He paid with his blood so that we can come back to God. My friends, I pray that God himself will touch you and he will do a new thing in your life as you embrace him, as you come back to him, as you return to your dwelling place. Who is God? He's ready. He's waiting for you. His son is pleading. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I pray that God himself will do a new thing in your life. And the grace of God shall always be sufficient for you as you embrace the grace of God that comes unto you, which teaches us that we need to return to God, which teaches us that we need to live godly in this evil world. I pray that the Lord will bless you mightily. In Jesus' mighty name.